Vroom, vroom. <laughs> right, this is about the Hall and Scott where we've got to. Again, it's probably a bit jumbled up. But we know this is a cult movie. We reckon it's a cult movie without the crowd. So anyway, this is back onto the Hall and Scott. I took the gearbox out. We took 80 thou off the place of the flywheel. We put it all back together again. The clutch is much heavier, but luckily young Tom's very strong, so that won't matter. And I can do it, so if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, yeah, so it really seems like it's working, but I had to put a stop. I put a stop on the clutch so that you can't push it too far. Because obviously now all the forks have gone in because we've taken the 80 thou off. So if you had no stop, you could probably push the thing until it crashed into the clutch plate. So we don't want that. So it's got to stop. Um, so I'm now going to put the gearbox back and and then obviously we'll try it. But that car's never had a strong clutch. So if this works, it'll be fabulous. So there we are. Hopefully no more oil will get through because as you, you'll see in the video, I've put a bit of the old tiger seal around where the nut is, but I don't think it was coming through there. I don't know where it's coming from, but provided we can keep the oil off the clutch, I reckon it's going to work. But um, you'll obviously see that when we try it out. So that's it, really. Um, I can't think of anything else on the Hall and Scott because you'll see it all in the film. But anyway, again, don't forget to subscribe. <coughs> this is the flywheel off of a Mercedes van, and these, these are the proper bolts from the Mercedes thing, so they're obviously a bit clever then, look, you've only got to look at them to see they're clever. So, you know, really good, really good. Mind you, I don't want to take all the bolts out and have the fly will fall on me, but luckily now we've got John and he can save me. This is going to be because you can see there now we adapted the Hall and Scott um, crankshaft to take the fly. If you give me the camera, Susie, you can see the oil, look. Now, how that is coming through there, I do not know, but that's what we're going to get to the bottom of. And then we're going to take a little bit off this face here to put a bit more preload on the clutch. But anyway, there's where we tinged it. And I said we put the big nut, see that's a great big nut that holds the thrust on normally. But we, we, we held our boss on, well, we, we shrunk the boss on, but that keeps it in place. And then to keep that from undoing, we just put that little bit of mid there, which is a bit bodgified, but it means it ain't going to come loose. And we can always, if we had to take it off, which if we had to take it off, we'd have to machine it. You'd have to machine that boss off because we got it really hot, dropped it on the crankshaft, one hit, if we hadn't got it on, we'd have had to machine it off if we'd only got it half on. But luckily, we got it on completely because it's also got a couple of keys as well. But I reckon the oil might be coming down the key. Yeah. Might have to give it a whack. Oh, no. no. Yeah, I think it you might. Come, but I know it's heavier than what I've got. Yeah. So, um, so what we do, give it a whack and then we've got this. If I get out of the way and it falls down, I won't get killed. Well, perhaps this is why my blood pressure is so good. Oh, it looked like it moved, John. That's it, John. Perfect. 
Right, so now you can see our boss. We John made that, and we had to put a couple of thousand in it, and obviously the, the proper Mercedes bolts. But you can see, we cut the end of the crank right off. I mean, that crank went to about there. And we chopped it off and used this big nut to hold that on, but obviously we shrunk it on anyway, so that ain't gonna come off. But, um, and then, because we had to put a hole in the end of the crankshaft for the first motion shaft. So we had to put the crank up in a big lathe and machine that out. But anyway, that turned out to be a fantastic success. And then the oil seal that's normally on the outside of there, we plug the ends of the bolts, and then this thing's got a, a scroll on it, so that as it's turning, it's pushing the oil back. And we thought it might not leak, but we were fantastically lucky, because it don't leak at all. So it's really, really good. I mean, that looks like it's a bit of an automotive piece. Right, this is the flywheel that was on the car. This comes off of a big old Mercedes van. And that was the clutch that was originally in it. We had the van for years, and we, we broke it up. We used to take the Bugatti about in it. And this was the clutch. Now, this whole thing was balanced. And then, when we had a slippy clutch, I decided to put a new one of them on. Because I happened to have it. But, obviously, this one wasn't balanced. And I thought it'd be all right, but unfortunately, it wasn't all right. It was, I think, it never felt right anyway. So this is gonna go back. Obviously, we're gonna give it a good clean up, and obviously, we'll give all this a good clean up. But then the next thing that happened, I say to John, where do you think that went? So we're looking round for marks, and we're looking and looking. So we put that on there. And then we get the torch. And we're looking. But luckily, there was a slight clue in that little bit of tape. The balancing man uses that bit of tape for the strobe. So then, so then what we do, we get the thing and we look on here, and we're looking all around it. Ah, and then we found them dot punches. So we look now. So we put that round near the near there, and then no, it's not there. It's there. And we're looking around, and we find that little mark there. Look, there's a little dot punch and a dot punch, and that all lines up with that. So we reckon that that is where that clutch came off that flywheel. And we've been all around that really carefully. And then previously we thought the clutch was slipping because it might be being held off by the spline. So we went to a load of trouble of making sure that was lovely. And it is lovely, so that ain't that. These came from America. They're sintered pads. So I took the lining off and put the sintered pads on. And they are about the same thickness of, as the original lining. But as you can see, look, this side is hardly used, where I think the oil might have been. And that side has had all the work. But I thought it might be possible that when you let the clutch out, that spline, if it's not absolutely loose, would be holding this side off. But I can't see it, because that's absolutely beautiful. So, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a bit off of this face, making careful that we mark it before we do, so we know where the clutch goes back. We're gonna take a bit off that face. Now, if we find we've got a problem with the clutch because we've taken it off that face, obviously we're going to do a bit of measuring, um, then it isn't terribly difficult because what we could do, we could then just put a washer on there, six washers, and move the clutch back to where it would have been. But I think you could take 80 thou over there and have a gamble. And if it puts a bit more pressure on the clutch, it can't do any harm. 
So that's the plan with that. So that's what we're going to do. I'm confident that that will work lovely because I reckon, you know, the only reason that the car didn't have a very slippy clutch was because of that. So that's what we're going to do. When we got it from America, they supplied it with the rivets. And, um, and as it happens, there was a hole that lined up dead in the right place. So, so we put it back, you know, it's pretty symmetrical. And it's symmetrical that side. But when we felt it was out of balance, this was the clutch that we had originally. So it ain't that that's doing it. It was obviously, I think, that. So it's going to be very interesting when we put it back, to put this old clutch back and see whether it actually was this that was out of balance. But we've got another little thing, which is a bit of a laugh, really. I want to show it to you. We use the thrust from the original um, van, and then we made up this bit, and that sort of slid, up, slid on there. So now you need the fork. You need the fork to push on there. So when we took the, when we took the gearbox out of the um, Mercedes, we took all the bits. So obviously we took that bit and we took the clutch. And somewhere, can't be far away. Ah, oh. this was the bit that was in the Mercedes for pushing the clutch out, and it was joined on. Anyway, we chopped it off, put it in the lathe, and machined that. So that's the original fork that pushed the clutch out. And then we made up this thing here to take it, and that's the pedal shaft, and it worked absolutely beautifully. So we had a real bit of luck there. But I mean, you know, the biggest bit of luck was having the Mercedes van so we could take everything out, and it was in the middle of the winter, and we had a young kid working for us. And I said, go out and take that van to bits. He didn't even flinch, he just went out and did it, so that was lovely. He's gone on to be quite a mechanic, and um, so that's good. He was only a kid then, I think he was still at school. But anyway, that's another story. Right, this is a lesson on getting it done. Boggery, really. This was the original shaft. That came out of the Mercedes, and that came out of a Bentley. So to make the thing work, we had to join that to that. Now, we're talking about a 10 litre engine with masses of chalk talk. So what we did was, this is almost like one of them videos you see in, in um, India. We, made, we turned that one down, and we turned that one down, and we made a sleeve, and we pushed it all together, and then we silver soldered it. Now, you think that would last 10 seconds. I didn't think it would last, but we thought, well, we've got to do it because we want to get all the measurements right. So anyway, we did that. I drove the car for at least 100 miles and it never gave any trouble at all. But anyway, so then, to do it properly, we made a new one. So that is a one-piece shaft, absolutely proper job, done. So that, was, so that got that done. But you see, that got us going. That got us finding out what we needed. You know, we got the length and everything. It's so easy to say to somebody, we want one of them. In actual fact, I think we turned up the blank and then we got somebody to put the spline and everything on. Right, so this is a rear hub. Now, this is a star axle, right? So that thing there didn't have anything to do with the Bentley brake drums. So what we did was we put a couple of little bits of MIG around it so we can put a register on it so that the Bentley brake drum can register against it to make sure it's going around square. Then, that bit there is Star, and that bit there is Bentley. So what we did was, there's a washer in there, there's a washer in there which is joined to this. So we thought, well, we'll weld it around there, and if the worst comes to the worst, it broke, the wheel wouldn't come flying off, because there's a washer in there that's welded to this. 
that the big nut that holds the flywheel on holds it together. So there we are. So that was another, another bodge, but it got it done, and it meant that we could say to Tim, right, Tim, make us a couple of hubs, and we just give him that, and he made us a complete hub, just like that. But I don't know how much time that saved by, you see, if you'd have stopped work and you'd have had to make a drawing of that and then put it on the car and then you think about it, it was much easier to do that and do that. And then you knew exactly what you wanted. But obviously you have to be very careful. And I mean, I didn't go racing or do anything silly with it when it had all that lot on it. But as it happened, it all worked out lovely. And then this thing here, it's quite good, because obviously that goes into the... Oh, it goes that way around. That goes into the engine, and then this goes onto the gearbox. So you've got just that little bit of compliance. You know, so when you go around the corner and the chassis bends a little bit, instead of that being solid to the gearbox, you've got just that nice little bit of compliance. So that is a good bit, really. Very good, that bit. Bentley, that is, that bit there. And obviously that bit there was off the Mercedes. But what a bit of luck. We had this old Mercedes van. It was sitting out in the field, and we said, what are we going to do? And my mate, Oggy, said, oh, why don't you take the flywheel off of that? So it was so funny. And this young kid who has worked with us, um, Jake, that was his name, Jake, he, uh, He's done a, quite a bit of racing, actually. He's been racing a little MX-5, I think. And then he, and he actually taught drifting. He went and did a drifting course. And, uh, you know, just as a kid, his mum paid for it for his Christmas present. He got in the car and the bloke was paralysed. He said, you've obviously done this before. And because his old dad's got a field, he's been driving the cars around the field since he could walk. So it was dead funny. So he said, do you want a job? So he then got a job teaching people drifting and uh, and then he went from there and he obviously done a little bit of racing but he's a talented boy and he's got a very good job and I'm very proud of him really. Um, so there we are. So now we're going to machine that which means we'll have to take it up the top but we've got that which we put on there for the driving the uh, dynamo. So whether we can hold it on there, I think that looks a bit iffy, personally. I'm a little bit worried about that, but John will decide what to do. And if not, what we could do, we could put it in the rotary table and then mill it off. Perhaps we could mill, I reckon we ought to take two millimetre, 80 thou. So perhaps we could mill it down. So all we need to do is to put it in the lathe and just take a whisker off it. So that might be how we do that. So that is, that's what we're going to do. And then that, which goes on there, like that. But you can see all the work's been being done that side, and it's just been slipping the other side. It's got this groove for the oil to go in, but it hasn't got any holes going to the outside. So that fills up with, um, that fills up with a little drop of oil. It ain't got anywhere to go. But I don't know what to think, really, because it's, it's not a lot of oil, but, you know, that's enough to make the clutch slip. So anyway, we're going to do that, and I'm going to feel a lot happier. Cause, you know, it's, it's one thing having a load of power, but it's very annoying when you can't use it, and you've got to gently press the bloody accelerator because you know the clutch is going to slip. Much nicer if you can change gear and put your foot down. So anyway, that's, that's the next step. And then we're 
kind of make a thing of going around the car and talking about the um, way we mounted the engine. So I think me and Tanya could do that now. So we were talking about die springs. Now die springs, they're what the, the clue is in the name. You know, when you have a press tool and it pushes down and you've got the bit in there, you want something to bring it back up. So die springs are very, very strong. They're, um, they're made of square section stuff and, you know, they're very strong. So anyway, so this was how we fit the engine. We make up these engine bearers. We made up these bits of steel with all the holes in. And we've got another one there. So we make all that up and we, we fit the engine in and we put it in with die springs. So I thought, well, that's good because I was so scared of breaking that bit off. So we put it in with die springs. I can't remember where I drove it, but I was driving it about. And I looked in and the bolts that I'd put in there to hold this bit on were broken. It actually broke the heads off. So we were lucky to get away with that. So if you look at it now, they've actually got die springs on them. So, so, it's, so that's got die springs, that's got die springs. The whole thing's mounted on die springs, so it's got a little bit of movement. But then we had the problem that when you press the starter, the engine would move over and the starter would slip. So we wound up, we had to put this Paxlin spacer, this Paxlin spacer in to stop the engine moving and that's just the right width to keep the other side in gear for the starter motor. So that's how we did that and that's the die springs. And the die spring, as it happens, I fitted the gearbox with die springs as well. So I can actually show you what a die spring looks like. So when we fitted this, again, again we fitted it with die springs. So that's on there, the bolt's through there, and that's mounted to the cross member. But again, a little bit of compliance, but you can see that's ridiculously strong, you know. I mean, that, is, you know, that, that feels like a solid bit of metal, but it isn't, obviously. So that's a die spring, and I'm a great believer in this, because having everything fighting against one another, you know, it's not a good thing. So, so that's how we did that. So that's how we mounted the engine. Right, what else have we done? Right, I did say I'd explain how we did the boss on the end of the crankshaft. So this is an original aeroplane engine that we got from America. So you've got this big lump from there to there to do something. So we made up a, a thrust race, which we made in a, a sort of cage. And luckily, underneath there, there were shims. And they was about an eighth of an inch thick. So what we did was we made a piece of metal that fitted around there and around the, the um, bearing and welded it to the bearing, it welded it all together. And then we, before we did this, we ground this piece of metal to be exactly the same size as the shims that were under there. Luckily, the shims was, you know, about an eighth of an inch. So that gave us that. So now when you put your foot on the clutch, you're pushing against there, and you're pushing against this ball race that was encapsulated in the housing here. So you're pushing against, so we've only used that much instead of this great thing. Well, obviously, as an aeroplane, it was a very serious thrust, because obviously the propeller's pulling it along. You only use the thrust when you push the clutch out. So that there, single bearing, held the crankshaft in position. So then what we did was we chopped that off completely, and then we made a great big lump of metal that was that size there, and actually getting bigger here for the flywheel. And then we filled up the holes that hold that on. And then we turned the spiral on there, the thread sort of thing on there, going the opposite way. So when the crankshaft turned, it sent the oil back. And then we heated it up hot 
And there's two key ways in there holding all this lot. So we use the two key ways. We heated it up really hot and dropped it on one chance and it went on beautifully. We were very lucky. And then the big nut that's in there somewhere, we tighten that up and we rigged it on. And you saw that earlier on the car underneath. So that is how we did that. Because putting the flywheel there, I didn't fancy. Plus the fact, I've got the original length of the car. That car was made to the drawing, so the length is right. But getting everything in, if the flywheel had been there and the front of the engine had not been right up against the front cross member, we would have never got it in. We'd have finished up with a prop shaft about that long. But as it happens, we've got a decent sized prop shaft. So, you know, again, we didn't put any drawings on a bit of paper, we just did it. But as we did it, we had to look, you know, finally, we haven't got a lot of room, keep the engine forward, blah, blah, blah. But then, the original gearbox that we built it with broke instantly. And I was at Chateau Impney and I welded it into top gear. So to move the car, you had to push the clutch out. So I made a bit of wood so that we could push the clutch out to, to push it into the, to the parking bay. And then I would drive it down to the line in top gear. But luckily in them days, it only had the original axle, which was about, oh, I don't know, nearly four to one, which was ridiculously too low geared. But as it happened, all weekend at Shadow Empty, I managed it and it all went down well. So I'm standing there and I'm talking to Hickey, another well-known bloke in the vintage sports car club. He's got a very original, lovely sunbeam. He's got an old Dodge that he does trials with. He's a smashing bloke, really. Larger than life character. So I said, oh, he said, what's up? I said, well, the gearbox is broken. He said, I know a bloke has got a kit of bits to build an airplane engine and he's changed his direction and he's going to do something different and he's got a lovely gearbox that he bought at Deppin Auto and here it is. I mean, look at that. I tell you what, the charlatans could have used this gearbox. Absolutely real lovely old thing. It had a few holes underneath that we had to um, TIG weld up, but, you know, that was all right. So we took it all to pieces, had a good look at it, nothing wrong with it. This is the gear lever, and as it happened, it was in exactly the same place as the other gearbox. So we made a shot thing up there for driving the prop shaft, and one there, turn, John turned these up, John turned that up that goes to the engine, and this one goes to the um, back axle. And, uh, oh, I did that. It used to leak oil out of here, because this, this here is where it selects, and it was very loose here, and I didn't really, I didn't really want to um, sort of make that tight, because there's nothing, you know, having a nice gear lever is lovely. So I made that bit of brass up to encapsulate the shaft that comes back out here and, and used to leak oil. So that, that worked like a charm. But then I thought, oh, hang on a minute. The, the gearbox has got to breathe. <coughs> and it might be breathing out of there where the oil's coming out. So what we had to do then, we made a... Um, we drilled a hole in the original filler and we put this on and then we run that to a catch tank and nothing has ever come out of it but it obviously lets it lets air out which is what we were on so that just went on there like that and then that went round and into the thing so then I made these two little things up because the handbrake um, shaft goes right the way through out to the other side of the car and they just give it a little bit of support so that obviously when you pull on the handbrake it's not wobbling about. So so that's the gearbox, but I tell you, this gearbox changes gear. I don't know what Bentley must have been thinking about, because it's like a ZF box compared to a Bentley, and it's not a dog box, you actually move the gears. And you only have to double the clutch when you're changing down. Changing up, if you judge it just right, it goes in lovely. But when, you, when you're changing down, you have to go vroom and change down. But then Tom is used to driving a three litre Bentley. So you know, he ain't going to have any problem changing down. So that's it, really. The holes in there. <laughs> what about if we spray it with a bit of 
大肥仔。啊，会当后二年的后生会会。So what it is? Yeah, just keep it on the front bit. You're right. It's when you put it on the reddish note, it won't turn. Oh, down a tiny bit, sorry. Right, so we've taken the two mil off of there and we've looked at the clutch and everything and it looks like it might work but obviously if it don't work we could always put a washer behind it and move it back. But the main thing is that I've tiger seal that bit there. Now I can't see how the oil can be getting down there but it won't do any harm so I've washed it all really clean and I've put tiger seal in there. Because there is a couple of sort of things that look like keyways, but they're not actually. So I don't know how they all got in there, but I don't think that's going to do any harm. So the next thing is I've got to clean all the holes out and uh, lock tight the bolts in and uh, obviously torque them up. Uh, and then we'll be putting the clutch and putting the gearbox back and hopefully we'll have a really good solid clutch, which this car is virtually never had actually so i'm very confident that this might work but we'll see taking that two millimeter off the surface of the flywheel has moved the clutch 
thrust race in. So the pedal is now two inches further this way. So we want to bring the pedal back. But unfortunately, when we made all this, because we made this, and we used the pedals off some old car, I don't know which car it is, but it's keyed into there. So to move that back two inches, it's only going to need half a key. So we really, you know, we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat that up right up there, and we're going to bend that back two inches. And what we're going to do also, we're going to try and keep it dead in line, because that comes through the floorboards. So that wants to go dead square. So I'm going to warm it up, and John's going to bend it. Switch it on, John, for us. Oh, what there? No, there. It's on. Oh, is it? malleable that's called I think you'll find it's made of malleable iron which they used to do a lot of Morgans had malleable iron so you can eat it up and you can bend it you can do all sorts of things with it before it let you down and of course that is the right pedal but what lovely wear they've got you know I was very lucky to find them Right, when I tell you about my box of old junk, it may seem, well, how can you have all that old junk? Well, I have, and here it is, look. I mean, there's a brake pedal. I mean, we didn't use that. And there's, you know, just, there's another brake pedal. Another one. Another two there. So as you can see, those brake pedals were just a fantastic bit of luck because they was in there. But they got lovely wear on them. Didn't have to do any faking. Just put them in. They look like they've been in there for a hundred years. But a lovely box of junk. And you know, it does go on further down. So if you're ever going to build yourself an in a special, you want a lot of junk. It doesn't have to be looked after particularly. It can even get wet. Because it only goes rusty and it looks more authentic then. Yeah.